Okay, so let's first look at eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells include animal and plant cells. So you'll need to know the structures of an animal cell. So as you can see here, we have a nucleus which controls the activities of the cell, the cytoplasm in which most of the chemical reactions take place, a cell membrane which controls the passage of substances into and out of the cell, mitochondria, which is where aerobic respiration takes place, and ribosomes, which are where protein synthesis occurs. In plant cells, all of the same um, features of animal cells are in plant cells, except for three differences. So those differences are the chloroplasts, which absorb light to make food for photosynthesis, a permanent vacuole, which is filled with cell sap, and a cell wall, which is made of cellulose, which strengthens the cell. In your exam, you'll need to know the differences between a plant and animal cell, and also you'll be able, you, you might be asked to label a cell as well. So here are the uh, similarities and differences. So uh, they both have a nucleus, they both have cytoplasm, but in an animal cell, it doesn't have a chloroplast because they don't photosynthesize, uh, whereas a plant does. Cell membrane, both have cell membranes. Permanent vacuole is only found in a plant. The mitochondria are both animal and plant. Ribosomes, both. And then cell wall, only found in a plant. Prokaryotic cells are slightly different to eukaryotic cells. So a good example is a bacteria. So bacterial cells do not have a true nucleus. So they just have a, what we call a single strand of DNA that floats in the cytoplasm. They also contain plasmids, which are small rings of DNA. They're also much smaller than eukaryotes as well. So you can see um, the kind of differences there. They're much simpler in terms of their structure, but they have similar structures to eukaryotic cells, except they do not have a true nucleus and they have small rings of DNA called plasmids. You'll also be expected to learn about specialized cells. So these are cells that are differentiated to become specialized to do a particular function or role. And there are uh, quite a few cells that you need to know about. So I'm going to go through them in turn, but you might need to go through this part of the video again afterwards. So firstly, in plants, we've got what we call palisade cells. So those cells are found at the top of the leaf and they absorb light for photosynthesis. And you'll notice one of the key things that they have is that they have lots of chloro chloroplasts and they also have a regular shape. The reason they have chloroplasts is to allow them to photosynthesize. Other plant cells you've got, uh, and you'll learn a lot more about these later in the uh, course, is xylem cells and phloem cells. So xylem cells is the movement of water, and these are made of dead cells, and they're waterproof, and they go from the root right through the stem to the leaf, um, and they transport water up the plant. Phloem cells, they move sugars and they move um, amino acids as well. And they're made of living cells and they move, um, they move these things all around the plant up and down. So they require energy from respiration. So mitochondria are required to move the uh, sugars up and down the plant. Root hair cells. So root hair cells are found in roots, obviously. There are millions of them. And you'll notice by the shape, they have a large surface area. Okay. And they also have very thin walls as well. And they allow uh, water and mineral ions to be absorbed. But the main key things are large surface area and very thin walls. So in animal cells, you'll need to know about sperm cells. So a sperm cell, as you'll probably know, fertilizes an egg cell and the tail it can move due to mitochondria in the middle part of it that releases energy. It also has enzymes in the head, which breaks down the egg surface of the egg so it can gain entry into the egg or ovum. 
Another animal cell you'll need to know is about muscle cells. So muscle cells, they contract to move the body. So they have filaments that slide over each other to shorten, to contract things. They need lots and lots of mitochondria and they're really important. And you need lots of energy from respiration and you need lots of glucose being uh, delivered to those muscle cells. And the third animal cell you need to know a bit about is nerve cells. Now, nerve cells are very long, they're very thin, they're insulated because they're carrying electrical impulses around the body and they connect to each other. And again, later in the course, you'll learn a bit more about nerve cells. Just a reminder, and I'm going to put the link into the description of this video, um, there is a required practical here in terms of observing animal and plant cells um, and Dr. Biology will go through that with you. OK, here's a question checkpoint. So this is a bit different to my other videos. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to have a look at these questions. And I'd like you to pause and actually answer the questions yourself before moving on to look at the answers. So if you're going to do that, pause now. OK, so let's have a look. So the first question, it says draw one line from each cell structure to the type of cell where the structure is found. So um, they want you to draw one from cell structure to the type of cell where the structure is found. OK, so the first answer, so nucleus is a eukaryotic cell. Permanent vacu vacuole is found in the plant cells only. Uh, and plasmids are found in prokaryotic cells. And then the second one shows a plant cell and it says, what are the names of structures A, B and C? Now, this type of question is a bit confusing because you've got to get all three structures correct to get the answer. Now, you'll notice there's a tick box on the right hand side. So you need to put your, your answer there. You need to um, put a tick in one of these boxes. So you need to go through structure A. So structure A, I'm going to tell you, is a vacuole. So it can either be that one or that one. Structure B is not a great um, diagram, but usually the smallest um, part of a cell is ribosomes. So I'm going to go to ribosomes. So therefore, C is a cell wall. So it can only be vacuole, ribosome and cell wall. There we go. OK, next question. This is about specialised cells. So what I would like you to do again is to, uh, in a minute, is to pause the video and to have a go at answering these questions. So three, two, one, pause. And welcome back. So question two. So the diagram shows four types of cells. So it doesn't tell you what types of cells they are. It says two of the cells are plant cells and two are animal cells. So then let's go to the first question. So which two of the cells are plant cells? So you need to look at the uh, clues. Now the first clue is chloroplast, so definitely D. So D is definitely a plant cell, so yeah, we could be either that one or that one. Now let's have a look. So A and D, well I know A is a sperm cell, so it can't be A and D, but C it says it's a root hair, so it's a root hair cell, so it would be C and D. Which part is found only in plant cells? So draw a ring around one answer. So we know from looking at the differences between plant cells that it is cell wall. Um, which cell is adaptive for swimming? Well, that's A, which is sperm. And which cell can produce glucose by photosynthesis? Well, that will be B D because it contains chloroplasts. And then cells all use oxygen. For what process do cells use oxygen? Well, they use it for respiration. 